my friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, PartyBot5000, and the classiest robot ever to have passed out drunkenly in the bowl of punch at a very fancy soiree. And today, it is time for the next episode of my Dishonored Let's Play, which, uh, if you've been keeping up, is probably episode 17, but might be episode 18. I still have not learned to check. So, uh, yeah, and it's been... It's been a fun long episode, we took a lot done today, but uh, it's time It's time to, time to go to bed. So, you know, goodbye everyone, I'll see you next time. Corvo! Wake up! You were making funny faces while you were sleeping. I decided to nap here in your room while Callista was taking her bath. She told me if there's ever trouble, I should always run here. Calista will come get me when she's done with her bath. Thanks, Corvo. It makes me feel better. Again, this game uses very simple tools to genuinely endear its characters to you. You have Emily, who's terrified, traumatized, has witnessed the death of her mother and not even been allowed to grieve. And so she takes comfort in the presence of her father figure. We saw her try to sleep last night and do so terribly, awfully, have a miserable time. We wake up in the morning to discover that she's been just sitting in our presence. We're just waiting for you to wake up to be a good, calm, reassuring murder dad. And this is one of the most adorable things in the game. If you've been playing on Low Chaos, she <laughs> she draws a picture of you labelled daddy. This is just my heart. Such a precious little entity. Such a poor, traumatised baby. Corvo, this is a drawing I made of you without your scary mask. Uh, if you're playing on High Chaos, um, the drawings you find are way more fucked up and uh, questionable, which again reinforces this idea that there is some kind of spiritual dimension to being high or low chaos, that there is some kind of further element that your behaviour in the world sort of leaks out its negative intent. and um, Because the system generally is designed in such a way that it's supposed to represent, you know, if you kill a lot of people, there's a lot more corpses lying around, people are more paranoid about the fact they might be murdered, so there's more rats and more more, more tension between people, but in terms of your actual actions, um, it really is this this sense that there is a sort of a, a, a further spiritual dimension going on than just the... Uh, than just the, the... the literal nature of your actions and how they have changed things. That There is this idea that if we are nice to each other, that sort of seeps into the world in some way, and if we are cruel, that cruelty seeps in as well. Alright, dipshit, what do you want? Say what you will, the royal physician knows his wine. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Corvo, I'm upstairs taking care of something important. Find me if you need anything. So, furthering his portrait as the most, like, unpleasantly weaselly man imaginable, um, if you use the heart on Piero a few times, it will say he spies on Callista when she's bathing. And well, what are you doing, you little scrot? I know it looks... I was inventing a new kind of lock. The tumblers shaped like snowflakes. The truth is, there is no snowflake lock. I was just... You know, looking through the lock. I couldn't bear it if she knew. I know you're a man of honor, and I also know that you can kill me at any time. And for both of these reasons, I apologize and beg for your discretion. You actually, it's interesting that he's afraid of you for that reason, because you actually can't kill him at any time. If you do kill him, you get a game over. You get the Irreconcilable Differences game over. So, um, you actually can just immediately look through the keyhole, or you can also uh, burst in and talk to her, which I will refrain from doing because we're not playing Bastard Evil Corvo. However, you never know what might happen in his runs. But um, if you do burst in there, you can... <laughs> She'll be, Corvo, I'm bathing, please leave. And you can either say, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't realise there was anyone in here, which is a blatant lie. Um, or you can actually ask if she wants some company, in which case she amusingly says, pretty much, like, under other circumstances, maybe, you know, you're pretty hot for a murderer, but um, we're under a lot of stress. Could you just leave, leave it out for now? Like, could you fuck off? Which is amusing. 
The high overseer is supposed to be the most pious man in the empire. No, I don't. I don't care about your religion. Living completely in alignment with the seven strictures in guiding the Just people in the. Tory power posing to himself quietly in the room while I leave as he talks to the empty space I once occupied. But yeah, so the portrait of Piero is just the most pathetic man imaginable. He can't even lie about his his horrible bullshit that he does. He's a completely amoral scientist who does incredibly cruel things to people. He spies on people when they're bathing. He lies about it badly. <laughs> um, it's just 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 an all round rat of a man. Just an absolute piece of shit. I hope Sokolov will cooperate. I'd hope to have him paint my portrait again one day. Just me this time. Like, speaking of, like, all of these people are unpleasant people in their own ways. And we have discussed this over the course of the game, but, like, at least Pendleton has it's resolved. It's not I object to holding him hostage for a while, since he's been aiding the Lord Regent. But it's a shame. Royal physician, I believe you and Corvo knew each other in former days. Unlike you, our friend Corvo knows what loyalty means. Bah! I am loyal to my inner spirit. You are the one consorting with the most wanted man. Empire. It's my belief that Corvo was innocent in the death of the Empress, and the former spymaster, or the Lord Regent, as he calls himself, is a ruthless tyrant bent on destroying this city, the heart of the Empire. You are mistaken if you think there's love between me and our Lord Regent. But whatever you intend to do here, I assure you, I am beyond petty scare tactics. If I don't scare you, Sokolov, perhaps these rats will. Even if they don't carry plague. I've heard of a swarm of rats stripping a child's body to the bone in half a minute. I've heard worse. How long do you think it'll be before you talk? Before you beg to talk? Rats? Is that the company you keep now, Admiral? I mean, yeah, pretty much. It's the company you keep that interests us so long. We know you painted a portrait of the Lord Regent's mistress. The very aristocrat who is funding the military with her fortune. She is the key to the Lord Regent's control over the city, and we must have her name. Sorry, Admiral. I cannot help you. It's time to put him to the question. So you have two options here. You can either full-on actually torture him, which... We're nice, Corvo. We only torture people who are withholding the keys to their safe from us. Uh, or... You're part of this rabble. But I know you have your reasons. Yes, he does. All we need is the name of the Lord Regent's mistress. It's very simple. I elect not to tell you. You will have to force the words from me, and I warn you, my willpower is quite legendary. A curious strategy. Of which I approve. Bribes is what's good. So, uh, there's some confusion about this amongst people who play this game, um, but the reason why we are hunting down the Lord Regent's mistress is not that there is some kind of, like, um, you know, extreme prejudice, kill everybody who's even related to this conspiracy sort of thing. She is the financier. Like, it is her funding that is providing, uh, <laughs> these I incidentally are the names. Drink. Yeah, yeah. Hint, hint, that is what the bribe will be. Um, this is of course the Hound Pits pub, and this is the this is the Hound Pits. It's a it's a dog fighting ring, which Not is swill to be found here, but the fine spirits. Yes, I get the point. But there is a um... animal cruelty based entertainments have been very popular throughout human history. It is only really in the modern day that we have an understanding of animal cruelty as a thing that is bad and to be avoided and prevented if at all possible. Um, you know, the traditions of bear baiting, dog fights, cock fights, they go back hundreds of years, thousands of years in some cases, and um, were very much still alive during the Victorian era that this game draws so much, you know, the British Victorian era, which so much of this game draws its inspiration from. What's up, Pierre? It's well known that Sokolov is virtually addicted to a rare liquor called King Street Brandy. The taste is revolting, but I happen to have a bottle. However, I am reluctant to give it to you for Sokolov. It cost me quite a lot. It is very expensive stuff, a blend of rare Pendician spices and a drop of whale oil. Would you care to purchase it? 
Now, see, in a just world, I should be able to... Uh, there should be more options than just either buy it from him or... Uh, um, or torture Sokolov. It is, it is kind of frustrating that the game really only gives you these two options. Because, um, honestly, that is, not having more options is counter to um, the ideals of the immersive sim as a genre. You should be able to do stuff. By the way, that's two upgrades to boot stealth now, which means we should be able to run around almost silently, uh, which should be very useful. The rest of these upgrades are still not useful to a non-violent Corvo. Um, I may, as well top, I may as well top up on all of these things, since I just I don't have any other use for them. Nice. So, yes, um, with the traditional like design imperatives of an immersive sim, having found Piero looking through the keyhole into the bathroom, that should provide you with a third option. The way these games usually go, a deus ex, any of these games, is that there's often, you know, little secret bonus hints that you can use to achieve things uh, in other ways. So it would honestly have made perfect sense if finding him looking through the keyhole was missable if it was entirely possible to miss that. And I believe it is. If you just come straight over here and, and start the torture, then, then you do miss the opportunity to see him doing that. So if you know that, you should be able to say, hey, how about instead of you charging me for this fucking brandy that is vitally important to our efforts as a, as a conspiracy, how about instead of that, you um, just... I, I won't I'll tell them that you. you're a creep. But if you get tired of questioning Sokolov, I'll let you know that his taste for King Street brandy is legendary. I think Piero has a bottle. Yeah, it they... might help persuade him. If not, well, call me if kids They team. really do not want you to miss the opportunity that this side quest exists. It's kind of ridiculous. I had um, a flask in my studio, and I'd known I'd be. Oh my god! Stop trying to make King Street Brandy happen. King Street Brandy is never going to happen. I Shut up! Shut up about King Street Brandy! Oh my god! I hate all of you. King Street Brandy? I didn't know any more existed. It is an extraordinary gift. I see I'm dealing with men of taste. I can tell you this much. She was always referred to as Lady Boyle. I painted her to be sure, but I never saw her face or learned her first name. You see, I painted her from behind. I assure you, she still makes a striking portrait. But I do not know which Boyle she is. I was to be introduced to her at a masked ball in her honor this very night. But I will miss that party, it seems. A masked ball at the Boyle estate. Tonight, the timing is perfect, Corvo. But the Boyles are wealthy and ruthless, so security will be very tight. Of course, you already have a mask, don't you, Corvo? He's right. You will be able to mingle with them once you're on the ground. We'll have to find out which of the Boyle women is connected to the Lord Regent and take her out in whatever way you can devise. We're very close now. If you do this tonight, you'll be able to strike at the Lord Regent himself and put Emily on the throne. May the wind favor you. So, seems pretty clear what we need to do, but uh, before we go do that, I do just want to resume my thoughts. Scutter, Blackie, Red, Kurg, Crusty, Grinder, Old Blue, Bacon, I mean, is this an array of, of fighting hounds, or is this, like, your entire queer friendship group's nicknames? I hear you're off to the Boyle's little bash tonight. I have just a tiny favor I'd like to ask you. Could you give this note to Lord Shaw? You'll know him. A rather brusque man wearing a wolf's mask. In fact, he may be looking for me. You guys have got to stop... You've got to stop ambushing me, for fuck's sake! I want a hair trigger. I am the most dangerous assassin the world has ever known. Why do you keep jumping out of doorways at me? Of course. Did you ever see pirates? And did you sink me? Of course. Dozens. Oh, yes. But that's not for young girls to hear about. But I will be Empress, won't I? And then I'll have to sink lots of enemy ships myself. And that's what Empresses do, mostly, isn't it? Of course. I knew it! I read that some pirate ships have witches aboard that can cause storms and make whales do what they want. Is that true? Yes. Uh, mostly. Maybe we should be quiet now. Very well. 
I love these occasional moments where her sort of childish joy and glee at the things children think are cool, witches and pirates and things, um, really shines through. It, the, the kind of dichotomy between the sort of like sad, withdrawn child who is, you know, obviously under the pressures of their position and all of this kind of stuff, and then the moments that it breaks through into this genuine childish glee is just absolutely delightful. Um, and Havelock's discomfort with having to talk about child things with a child. He is clearly not a man who is able to interact well with children. These people exist. It's normal that some people just don't get along with kids and don't know how to handle them. And especially that some people of that type think they do know how to handle them. Anyway, we are going to dive along into the next chapter now, but that will be next episode. I know this is a bit of a short one, but uh, hey, I've been sick all last week, so... I'm only just stepping back into it right now, so that's going to be all from me for today. Uh, come back next time for what is widely considered the best level in the entire game, Lady Boyle's Party. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements and one tweet micro reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.